Okay. All right. I am thrilled to welcome Mickey to the Sasaga podcast. Yay. <laughs> so Mickey, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, my name is Mickey Sturgis. I am a women's empowerment and abuse recovery coach. Also, um, master certified neuro coach helping oh. women. Yeah. Okay, so we've got to unpack all of that and, and learn more about what exactly that is yes. as we go into this. Before we get into this, let, let's hear what's your word of the year. You know, I had to tell you, um, to be honest, it's changed a lot <laughs> this okay. year. Well, you know, because of the pandemic, yeah. last year it was like, oh, growth, and I was like, that went out the window. So <laughs> this, I carried on to this year growth that okay. is my my word for the year okay so it started yeah. being growth and then you changed it and then it's come back to being growth. Yeah. <laughs> exactly and yeah, what does like, what okay. does growth what's what does that mean for you for me growth means resetting and just going back to last year was just the perfect time for me to just sort of look through what have i done what do I want? What does God want me to do? You know, all that resetting. So mm -hmm. my, my word actually changed to growth to reset or maybe regrowth. And then, you know, or maybe achievement. Then mm -hmm. it just came to me and said, okay, this is the year to just grow. You mm -hmm. know, grow as a person, growth in business, growth in, you know, personal development, all that. I mm -hmm. think that is my sort of, yeah, that's my word. And that's the, the word that I live by right now. I love that how you include that reflection, taking the time to reflect in, in into the growth as well. And that's, that's yeah. so important. Well, I, I, otherwise you won't grow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So you keep just, I am the type of person that just keep looking ahead. But then <laughs> if I don't look back, I'm just going to use this, make the same mistake over and over and over <laughs> I have done that of course, I have done that you know yeah. so many times I was like oh yeah I made a mistake same again same again same again I'm like okay mm -hmm. what is wrong so I, you had to like reflect you know oh time. that is that is so important and also if you're not so when you reflect you get to avoid making those same mistakes and then when you reflect you realize what you have done and, and how much you have grown as well because I think yeah. that's a, that's a struggle that a lot of a lot of us have is is the thinking oh, I'm just not getting anywhere <laughs> but then when you really take that time to look back you see the growth and it's pretty amazing yes you know what though um, as a human being, I think we tend to look in the negatives. Totally. First, right? And my coach, I have a coach, and he had to like remind me, you know, it's like, Mickey, just look at what you've done, how yeah. far you've gone. You don't yeah. keep looking at the negatives all the time. Well, yeah. I haven't done this. Well, you have done this. Well, no, I haven't done this. You know, it's like going back and forth. That's not very healthy. <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. so let's go let's go into that a little bit because you, you introduced yourself at the beginning and mm -hmm. it's like and all of these things that i do and probably listeners are like what <laughs> yeah yeah and, and you know and i've known you for a couple of years now and i've seen yeah. your tremendous growth oh, over, you. seriously like when i i heard you on emiko's podcast mm -hmm. for the second is it the second time yeah it's the second right? time mm -hmm. and i was like wow mickey has just gone so far so um let's 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 hear a little bit more if you can just take us on that journey of of um of how you've developed in your coaching and what you do okay so when I met you through Emiko, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, I was in network marketing. <laughs> I was doing network marketing business, and that's what I wanted to grow. I, wa I was the um, leader of the network marketing business. I didn't have a huge, huge group, but I did have leaders I wanted to coach, and I just developed this love for coaching. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, you know, grow as a leader just mm -hmm. in the network marketing business, you know, but as I started learning more, I was like, God, oh, this is, this is what gives me my, it makes my heart sing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, every time I coach someone, I was like, so happy. Mm -hmm. And um, my coach, 
at that time told me, every time you talk about this, you light up. Yeah. Why don't you own it? I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, so that was my first aha moment. But coming back to my first, when I first came to United States, um, I'm originally from Japan, so I speak Japanese fully. Well, but I've been here for longer than I was in Japan, right? Right. But anyway, I came here and um, shortly after I met my ex-husband, who to me was very handsome. It was like very charming. But shortly after I got married, I found out he was very abusive. And I, because I made a commitment to make this work, I stayed in that abusive marriage from the beginning to the end, 13 years. And I had a child with him as well. And um, so it took a long time for me to heal. But during that business, when I started, well, I'm remarried and I'm happily remarried. But as I was going through this coaching, you know, like, field I realized something was stopping me every single time that little voice inside of me was I'm not good enough mm -hmm. I'm not good enough I'm not worthy um I was so afraid of judgment by mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. and as you could I, as you could tell probably about, about three years ago when I met you I was afraid I was afraid to talk to to people in Japan or speak Japanese. I speak Japanese, yet mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I can not possibly go after Japan market. And I had all these ex excuses. Mm -hmm. That all the way came down to, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And I, how I found that is when I started, um, you know, growing my business and I hit a ceiling. Mm -hmm. I, it was like, oh, where, what happened? Mm -hmm. Why do I always self-sabotage? Mm -hmm. Why do I always go back and say, well, I need to go back to the basics and I have to learn the basics where, you know, it's like piano, right? You cannot only do scales. You mm -hmm. can practice, you know, you, you might be practicing um, patty cake first mm -hmm. <laughs> or cross buns. <laughs> <Patty cake. laughs> you know. Maybe in the beginning, you might be doing hop cross buns, but you might mm -hmm. be doing for Elise, you know, mm -hmm. and then you might be doing Nocturne. And mm -hmm. that there is that thing, but you cannot keep going back to hot cross buns. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing. I kept going back to hot cross buns. <laughs> <laughs> I love this analogy. <laughs> you know what I mean, though, right? Yeah, totally, totally. And I was thinking... But every time I say it, I do that, say, oh, this is so easy. But that was my comfort zone, I tell you. Mm -hmm. and that was my comfort zone. And as, as soon as I started growing, I will go back to it. Self-sabotage, self-sabotage. Yeah. And I kept telling myself I'm not good enough. And that actually started probably a childhood. But that was actually confirmed, you know, confirmed um, during my abusive marriage because he would say, Things like, nobody will love you the way I do. You are nothing without me. You know, you think you are all that, you are, you are nothing. And you're worthless. And he would make fun of me in front of clients and, and things like that. In front of clients? Oh, yeah. I, believe it or not, I, w I got into real estate. <laughs> And um, in California, and I was doing the real estate and the, my first client, I was so happy, we were creating a contract. And because it was my first time, I had some questions. And he, he looked at me he goes, she doesn't know what she's doing. In front of the client. I know. So I was like, uh, and of course, we laughed. I laughed, but they probably felt uncomfortable. You know yeah. what I mean? And I could tell that this couple was like, is she okay? And I say immediately, I said, no problem. You know, if I don't know, because I'm new, I admit I'm new. If I don't know something, we have manager backing us up. So don't worry about it. You know, that's what I had to say, but oh my goodness. And after that, I, I quit because I, I did not want to do that anymore by, with him because he was doing it with me, you know? 
But anyway, so that kind of things, if you keep over and over repeating over and over, that mm -hmm. actually becomes your identity, belief and identity. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> that's actually um, that clicked with me when I met Dr. Shannon, who is my mentor and yeah. coach. Um, yeah. I got master certified neuro coaching with him, with her. Actually, I got into her program first because this is it. I think there's something wrong with my brain. You know, that's what I was telling myself. I was like, I think there's something wrong with my brain because I know all these things. I know how to set up a funnel. I know how to um, talk to people. I know the strategies, but mm -hmm. there's something is missing and I, it clicked and I had to go back to that mindset piece. And, you know, I love personal development. I tell you, oh, <laughs> so, you don't we all, don't we all. And, and, right? they, and Dr. Shannon as well. I know her. I actually met her in, oh, that's right. yes. in 2018. So mm -hmm. it's so, yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing. And, um, so when, when, you know, when I was, I was in sales, it, I used to work in the corporate world mm -hmm. and I was in sales and I used to put cassette, cassette tape in the car, <laughs> listen to Brian Tracy, yeah. Anthony Robbins, you know, so I loved that. So yeah. in my mind, my mindset's good. I don't need to, I don't need any more than, you know, what I've been doing. I've read books, I listened to cassettes mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, go for it, you know. Oh. So yeah. I was thinking that's not I, what I needed. So that's why I kept looking for something like strategies and how to do this, how to do that. I was looking for how to's and yeah. yet I did not progress. And I was thinking, yeah. what, the, what the heck? what the heck with me? And then I met Dr. Shannon and yeah. everything clicked. And yeah. so when she offered a neuro coach certification program, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> this is what I want to do with other people because yeah. I know that a lot of people are, you know, struggling and yeah. they probably don't know why. And another thing that happened is 2019, Mm -hmm. you and I belong to business by design by James Wetmore mm -hmm. I went to his event in Laguna mm -hmm. Beach and yep. long story short I was one of those lucky ones to get on the hot seat in the at the event oh my goodness amazing in front of 280 people right yeah and James before he said he announced who that was he said this person this morning manifested to be on this chair. And when I was on the chair, I was like, no, I never, I didn't manifest anything. So <laughs> it's not going to be me. Right. I, I was like, it's not going to be me. And um, we had to look under the chair, you know, the, and then look yeah. under the chair and there's going to be a piece of paper that says hot seat. Yeah. And I looked and there was me, it was me. And I cried. Um, I was thinking, oh my goodness. So what happened was, I, I don't know if, um, if I could say this, but I believe that was God's way of get, waking me up. Right. Because I went back to the, to the Airbnb that night, looked at my journal. I do scripture journaling every single day. Uh -huh. And that day I wrote, God, I don't know this is what you want me to do, or I want to do this, but this is not something that I want to like lightly jump into, which was, mm -hmm. I kept hearing my, the voice saying, you didn't go through that horrendous experience of abuse in vain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing that in my mind. And I had this little dream say, like, oh, maybe I will have like a, maybe a nonprofit or maybe I'll, I'll help those women who have gone mm -hmm. through the same thing, but I don't know if I've been healed already. You know, it was like going back and forth, mm -hmm. but that hot seat confirmed. It's like God shook me by the shoulder and say, Mickey, wake mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And oh, that year, everything like start to, to like go really fast because that's mm -hmm. when I 
I got into Dr. Shannon's program, got certified the, the following year, which was last year. And it's like people start bringing me people mm-hmm. like, hey, this person needs help. And, and of course, I was doing that for free. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there's tremendous growth from that yeah. because I have learned it. I basically transformation was my own yeah you know what I mean and then I started to say okay well still I was still doubting Mm -hmm. like oh god I don't know if I can do this Mm -hmm. and like you know having a coach really really helps Mm -hmm. so that really started to take shape that's why I create last year I created my own program and even that the name I was like oh I don't know what to do and I prayed in the shower and mm-hmm. then showed you know it's like a name showed up and it's just like amazing amazing um, so what is the program called it's called Grace Academy and and you know you say Grace okay well that's Grace well there's acronym for that right <laughs> so, yeah so G is for gratitude and grace to yourself R is I teach Dr. Shannon's um sort of tweaked version of for our process which is the reprogramming Mm -hmm. subconscious reprogramming Mm -hmm. and a is affirm and automate Mm -hmm. and c is create your life that you Mm -hmm. like and embark e is for embark embarking your life the the you deserve you know so i love that so much (laughs) and so this is so who who are the sort of women who are coming into the grace academy because i'm also you know i'm thinking we the the Sasaga podcast listeners now there may be some women who are like I I think I need this (laughs) well um it's specifically for women and I I do work with only women and if the person has domestic abuse experience betrayal divorce you know some debilitating experience like that to Mm -hmm. really when you go through something like that it actually rewires your brain. Yeah. God didn't create our brain to be so negative, you know, but over the many, many, many years, you know, we, we, just, we live in a fallen world. We just tend to think negatively. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why people say, if you think one negative things, you have to think of 10 positive things to, to overcome that. Right. So mm-hmm. it's the same thing. So um, I, I believe there are people who might say, well, I overcame it. I healed. I'm already healed. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like you're stuck, like in business, it shows up very Mm -hmm. clearly. It Mm -hmm. showed up for me because I was like, I don't know why am I, why am I like self-sabotaging so much? I knew Mm -hmm. self-sabotaging. And I was, I catch, I caught myself oh, I'm self-sabotaging. Where is it coming from? Especially in the mon- money mindset too. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you have to have that money mindset is, uh, gosh, it came from, I found out I came from my parents mm-hmm. and, you know, my, my dad used to tell me when I was first got into sales, he was not happy. Mm-hmm. He was like, why are you in sales? Why are you doing that? And I'm like, uh, because it's my job. <laughs> so why was, he, why was he not happy about you being in sales? He had this limiting belief that he, um, that all salesmen are like you, sales, used car salesmen. Right. The people who are sleazy and mm-hmm. all they want is money. Mm-hmm. And that was his limiting belief. And his belief was money causes um, relationship issues. Mm-hmm. So if he gave money or he, if somebody came to him and say, I want to borrow money, mm. he would just give it to them because he, he knew that could break the relationship. Mm-hmm. And he's, he was that type of person. And I, he was such a giver. So, you know, I, I love him very much, but that I can see, you know, that was his limiting belief that was passed on to us daughters. Yeah. 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 
So, so I just I, wanted I, to take a, take a moment and just uh, um, just clarify this a little bit for some mm -hmm. Sasa podcast listeners, because I know some listeners will be very familiar with this whole idea of limiting belief and stories that we've got yeah. from our parents. For some, it may be a new thing. So you may want mm. to consider this. If you are feeling that there's something that you're struggling with um, or you have like beliefs about something, sometimes you can ask yourself, is that really true? And where did I get that belief from? Because it can, it can very often come back from, from your parents who probably had very good intentions, but mm -hmm. maybe said things that, you know, when we're, when we're a child, right. And you totally know this oh, week, yeah. right? mm -hmm. because as a child, we, we have no filters and we just take those messages in and then we believe it the whole time. Yeah. And also as a child, we form all kinds of different stories. Yeah even if it's not true, yeah. you know, um, you know, you're, you're, let's say you're left alone and you, and in the house in Japan, in Japan, you know, <laughs> when my age group, my parents will just leave me at, at home at night my, with my sister and then go t do play bowling. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like normal. So, yeah. but if I were to, if I were insecure about something, I might've formed they abandoned me or mm -hmm. you know what I mean so there's some things like divorce for example mm -hmm. I remember when I got divorced my child my son now he's 25 so you know we talk about some things but he thought um I did he I didn't want him mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and I had to have a, a, a deep talk with him because I didn't he he might not remember he told me this but mm. he was um i think it was in high school he was um he he said i i told him like please come back to me i would like you to come come live with me because he decided to go live with his dad when he was sixth grade mm. and oh it was it was a heart-wrenching years but anyway i told him to come back and he said you know you guys um when when it's convenient for you you take me back but if when it's you're not convenient for you you don't want me and I was shocked mm. to hear that I was shocked to hear that and I apologized I said I no, that was not my intention you know mm. your dad wanted to keep you for a year and I gosh and he that was true you know he wanted to keep him and I said okay for one year and he didn't he never returned him back to me so you know, that was, that was the case. And I regret it, but you know, it was past and I, I had a good talk with my son. So that was okay. But man, that was hard, hard years of my life. Yeah. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, we, we talked a little bit, at the, before mm -hmm. we started the recording about yeah. the, the Sasuga success cycle. And, and I said, which is the, the area that you're that's most meaningful mm -hmm. for you and you said you said phase one right so can you yeah. tell us a little bit about why you say that well um like like i was saying when i first started business you know i was in network marketing mm -hmm. and then i changed to coaching even when i look back at in corporate years what is the most important in my opinion is mm -hmm. mindset if you don't have mindset in, if you don't have your, yeah, mindset, <laughs> what mm -hmm. else do, what, what else can I say? Um, mm -hmm. Belief system mm -hmm. into a person, the person who have this success mm -hmm. or success that you want, mm -hmm. otherwise you won't get there. Right. That's, that's, that's the big aha epiphany moment for me and like I was saying, you can learn the strategies, you can learn how to's all day long. Mm -hmm. If your mind, if your subconscious mind says, uh-uh, you don't deserve this. Mm -hmm. You're not good enough. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, nobody's going to accept you. Yeah. Then it's not going to go anywhere. You can do so much with willpower. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I did. I did like, okay, I'll do this. I'll do this. And then boom, I'll hit the, I don't know. I'll hit a ceiling. Mm -hmm. I would say ceiling. And I say, oh, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I get burned out. Yeah. And that's what, that was a cycle. It was like, it was like a pattern, you yeah. know? Yeah. And 
that's that's when I it hit me when Dr. Shannon said, "Well, there is a success switch." I'm like, "Really? Success switch? Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to know." <laughs> you know, uh -huh. and that's really the subconscious reprogram because every, all the beliefs are in there. And did you know? I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> 95% of the decisions, every single decision that we make are made by subconscious mind, in yeah. the subconscious mind. So, yeah. you know, we don't even think about it. It's, yeah. it's not even coming to the subconscious level. So yeah. a lot of times when I start working with clients, it's very hard for someone to, it was hard for me to come up with negative thoughts it's like what is the true negative thoughts that's hidden behind yeah. you know all these things and and uh, um i had a client who said i really don't have negative thoughts um when negative thoughts come to my mind i just quickly change my channel and i'm good uh -huh. and i as i started working together with her yeah. she had discovered some uh -huh. major limiting beliefs yeah major yeah because yeah. you don't realize because <laughs> because they're normal to you so that's why right, they're right. beliefs because they're, they're hidden <laughs> yeah like you know this i, I thought it was so interesting she said if i had like two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a month i'll be fine so i said okay okay that's all you need and she goes yeah are you sure? And she said, okay, 5,000 then, you know? Okay. So she changed it, but she didn't believe it. She just said to herself, 2,500 would be good enough, right? Right. So her revenue stops there. Uh -huh. So when hap what happens is when she starts to grow, uh -huh. she subconsciously yeah. stops it. Yeah, she, she stopped taking clients. Oh, I'm good. I don't need any more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she wouldn't grow from there because she had that limiting belief, but she didn't. She said, that's not limiting belief. That's just mm -hmm. how I believe. See, that's belief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were laughing because I was like, yeah, that's a belief. So, okay. So we had to work some, you know, work through that. Yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I, I remember reading, um, uh, Gay Hendricks book, the uh, big, big leap, is it called? It's a while since I've read it, um, and he talks about what he he, he says is upper limiting, so mm. which is very much related to the to those subconscious yeah. limiting beliefs. Is once you start to have some success and 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 go somewhere, um, and you know, for Sasaga podcast listeners, you can probably think about this in your own life where you've started to make some progress in something, and mm -hmm. then something happens. Yes. that pulls you back like mm -hmm. you get sick or this oh, yes. that, like there's something happens that pulls it, you back it's so true you know physically shows up in a physical um symptom yeah you know we we think oh i'm just getting sick i'm getting sick but really that may be coming from that be belief you know exactly. if, when you think about children uh -huh. When they get all of a sudden get sick at the on the day of exam, right? Yeah. <laughs> or the day that they have some big thing, you know, they all of a sudden get sick. Well, yeah. they might be truly sick, but that might be coming from their nerve or you know limiting beliefs right there. Yeah. So that is still happens in in, in adults. Totally. Oh my goodness, I can think of so many examples of that too. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow so um let's go into let's go into the uh the spontaneous questions yes. i'd just like to ask you a few questions sure. and then uh, after that i'd love to um hear what what specific advice you have for listeners or what you know what you have to offer for, especially for women who are going through some kind of um abusive relationship or some kind of difficulty they've gone through a divorce or the, you know the, what you've mm -hmm. talked about um, we'll come to that. So yeah, sure. Let, a, a few, a few spontaneous questions first, and okay. uh, and listeners, Mickey has no idea what I'm going to ask. <laughs> I know. I'm just a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's the ducky ducky moment. Ducky right. ducky moment. Yeah. I'll start with an easy one. Uh, well, I think it's easy. Uh, favorite book or or movie? Oh, okay. So 
Um, I have a lot, but right now I am uh, listening. I, I love audiobooks. Yeah. Uh, it's called Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hills. And it's Napoleon Hill? Uh, yes. Oh. Napoleon Hill. Okay. It's called the, okay. the Level Devil. Oh, it's so good. Really? And I haven't finished it yet, but it's it's like, whoa, this is amazing. There's in the beginning, there's this dialogue between the devil and you know the, the, uh, the him. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's it's I won't spoil it for you, but I think it's really, really good. Oh, I might go and yes. look for that one. Yes, yes. Yeah, put some audible credits. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, and, you know, there are so many other good ones. Like, I love Hal Elrod, Miracle Morning, Miracle oh, yeah. Equation, yeah. Limitless by Jim Quick, of course. <laughs> the, power yeah. of sub, sub, the Power of Subconscious Mind, that's a really good one, too. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that one, too. That's one yeah. I've listened to multiple times. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah, things like that. And those, are, of course, I geek out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have you read The Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Love that too. Did you just say, ah, this is yeah. happening? It's right? so true. It's it like, is true. yeah, incredible. Mm -hmm. Love yeah, that. We'll have so. to. So we'll we'll list. I, th I think it's probably going to be useful for listeners. We'll mm -hmm. list these books in the show notes so that people. Yes, for sure. <laughs> we don't normally have guests who give a whole library, but you can. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's a okay. good thing. It's a yeah. good thing. Um, okay, so my next question, and it's you know, it's amazing. A lot of people ask me about this: is how to have fun. How do you have uh, fun, Mickey? Uh, um. I love, um, actually, I don't know. I love kickboxing. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a fitness kick, kickboxing. I don't, yeah. you know, spar or anything like that, but I do, I do just, I love that. So I've been doing kickboxing for a couple of years. And before that I was doing aerobic kickboxing, you know, like, what is that? Billy Banks? Or oh. Yes, yeah, Billy's yeah. boot camp from years yeah, yeah. Ago. something like that. You know, some years ago, that's what I that's how I started. And of course, you know, I have a couple of children. I I was doing that in five months pregnant or you know, full term I even. So yeah. it was fun. But now I actually do kick the bag and punch the oh, bag. Yeah. It's so good. I love oh. that. And that's fun. Um, and another thing is that I just go like I love camping. Mm -hmm. Not the not the primitive camping <laughs> i have to have like bathroom but you know i have a pop-up camper we have a pop-up camper nice so we we go i mean i live in colorado now so yeah it's it when i was in california we enjoyed beach camping but now we are mountain camping that sounds fun. great i love it love yeah it. it's fun all right i have i have one more spontaneous question that's very much okay. uh, related to your area is what is a limiting belief that you had that you now no longer believe? And I'm sure there are many, so just pick one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because if you tell, if you ask me limiting beliefs, I was, I would say I was a queen of limiting beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like for example, money. Yeah. I, I did believe money was something that. I shouldn't have. Um, so that's why even yeah. when it came in, I would give it away just like my dad, right? Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. and until then, I didn't realize that. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. shoot, <laughs> just like my dad, give, 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 give. Mm -hmm. So like when I was doing the network marketing, all I did was like, yeah, here's a sample here's here here tons of giveaways mm -hmm. you know and i did give if i made 100 i'll probably gave away 80 of mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. and i didn't really care mm -hmm. and but if you are in business you do have to care mm -hmm. you know so that's one of the big ones that i had to come overcome um another thing is that people's judgment yeah. You know, now I'm 56 years old. I, you know, to a point where it's like, who cares? Yeah. They, they're not going to even come to my funeral. You know, yeah. they're not going to even cry. Why would I care? 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it took a long time though for me yeah. to get here, but I'm working, you know, I've been working on the subconscious reprogramming and mm -hmm. that is onion layer. So yeah. if you conquer one, another yeah. one shows up, another yeah. one shows yeah. up. So just keep plugging along. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not perfect, even though I can teach you those things. I'm still using the, the method to, exactly. to get over some still my limited beliefs yeah yeah we all are right like you know if uh, to me if you go to a coach and they say to you that they know everything i would be i would steer very clear from that yeah. <laughs> coach yeah and, you know i said like and i do i'm i'm always i'm always learning and i've had some some of um people in my communities have said what you still go to seminars and you still you still take yeah. courses and you still do it yes <laughs> because there are so many, like you say, so many onion layers. You you deal with one thing and it's like, oh, there's something else. Oh, there's something else. Right. Yeah. You know, do you know the Anthony Robbins? He has a coach. Mel yeah. Robbins. He has she has a coach. Yeah. And um, do you know the uh, Gary Chapman, who uh, is the author of uh, Five Love Language? Oh, yes. OK, so he I, I still remember this was many, many years ago. I. I listened to some interview with him and his wife and really stuck with me. He's, he is the author of those books. He's a pastor, I think a pastor and counselor himself. Yeah. He said he goes to a counselor, marriage counselor once a year, every single year. Wow. And I was thinking, wow, if he goes there, yeah, I need to go. <laughs> you know, like my ex, my my husband, current husband, and I, we're not perfect. We don't have a perfect marriage. And mm. I'm thinking, you know, if I was telling my husband that if you say you don't need counseling, I think you're something wrong with you. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, but it is true that we <laughs> do have something to work on every single year. You know, <laughs> so once a year, just let's go once a year. <laughs> <laughs> I no. love that so much. If you think there's nothing wrong with you, you need counseling. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. You know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. You know, that's what I said. It's, I mean, if you think you're perfect, that's pretty narcissistic. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right brilliant yeah. all right. So so as we as we start to wrap up this episode mm -hmm. of the Sasaga podcast. Mickey, what else would you like to share with the Sasaga podcast listeners today? Okay, so I spoke with you in English, but I do speak Japanese. And <laughs> I want to this, want to this. And I, I am starting to co um, a coaching 101, starting co 101 coaching in Japanese, if anybody is interested. Um, I, I continue with the English as well. And my yeah. program is English. And if you are um, open to English, you're, you know, what with 101 comes with the program. So, um, yeah, uh, okay. that's what I offer. And right. I do and have a freebie. Mm -hmm. This is especially for, so that you'll be looking at some, uh, a Japanese, a Japanese woman who's been going through some kind of difficult situation. Mm -hmm. She can do the one-on-one -on -one coaching with you. And she can also yeah. be part of the, the English program at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Really? And, you know, you could be um, a person who may be trying to grow business. Mm -hmm. You know, I know your, your um, listeners are a lot of business owners or maybe corporate workers, mm -hmm. um, employ, you know, the managerial level or whatever. Mm -hmm. Still, the, this is like the fundamental. So you can use this method to really reprogram. Senzai uh, ishiki no kakikae. Right. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. With this right. this method is I really love this method because you use this your own language, right? So you know it's not somebody else's. Uh -huh. And also I also incorporated Hal Elrod's teaching, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who says uh, if well Dr. Shannon says this too. If your subconscious doesn't believe what you're saying to yourself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, yeah. I'm a millionaire. It does not work because your subconscious yeah. says, uh-uh, you're <laughs> lying. Like, I, I won't buy that, you know? But if yeah. you say, I'm committed right. to become, 
you know, that person who have that, yeah. then that's a little different story. So yeah. I teach that also how to create your affirmation. Right. Yeah. And I do have a freebie, which is 32 affirmations to get you started and oh, self, yeah, self care worksheet. So, oh, I yeah, love that. anybody okay. likes that. Yeah. Definitely. So we'll we'll link to all of those in the show notes, and yes. uh, I'll probably I'll probably opt in for that one myself because I love <laughs> I love those. <laughs> great, great. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mickey. It's been fabulous catching up with you. Yes, and, time you know, went by so fast. It really, really did. And just seeing how far you've come over these yeah. years and because of the work that you've been doing, you know, because of the subconscious yeah. reprogram that you've been doing for yourself and that yeah. you can support women with that as well. I love it. And so. you always talk about be, do, have, right? Yeah. And it's the same, same thing. You have to be the person yeah. exactly. that who has those things that you want, yeah. then you can have, do and have. Yeah. And a lot of times we have to like have, have, or do, do, do. Yeah. And that's backwards. And I, oh, I have to tell you, I have done do, do, do a lot. So, exactly exactly yeah. in the in the the sasaga cafe which is our online community in japanese mm -hmm. and then also in the sasaga vip women's coaching program which is a three-month program in english in both of those there's a big focus on your your um <clears throat> your naritai sugata your who you you know your ideal mm -hmm. you the sasaga version of you basically yes 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 and so that's exactly what you talk about the identity because you get you, you need to work on the identity to then be able to make those changes in your in your life yeah wow. I'm still working on it <laughs> <laughs> we all are right yeah it's yeah I'm going because there's just more and more levels every time yeah mm. I love it though it just makes my heart sing yeah thinking about that yeah yeah love it all right well thank you so much okay bye bye, -bye.